Hey everyone, it's John from Ride Up State, and I want to talk a little bit about something that I watched last week. It was a roundtable video that Geo, the American Gigolo, uh, formerly the Rideshare Revolution, he had a roundtable and he brought on drivers from other markets and they talked about whether or not they could effectively have a strike against Uber, Lyft, etc., and whether or not that would have any impact. So I watched the whole video. I watched some of the arguing that was going on in there. And since then, he and Torsten, the rideshare professor, have kind of been going back and forth. Uh, you know, typical YouTube drama that you see. And that's their business. It's not mine. If they want to do that for content, that's that's fine if they want to do that. I really like the fact that Geo reached out to Kevin, the entrepreneur, however you pronounce that. They're kind of like frenemies on online. I don't, I don't know. Uh, they're enemies, frenemies, who knows? I really like that he brought in someone that he typically disagrees with. It just really goes to show you that that Geo is open to good ideas, no matter where they come from. And and I I just want to salute him for that because you can have a you can differ on some things, but if there are things that you agree on or you know that someone has a good opinion, it's always good to listen to them. I want to talk about this idea of striking and when and specifically where drivers should strike. So in my opinion, I don't think we should pick a holiday. I honestly think it should be a Monday morning commute. Here's why. There are people who rely on Uber and Lyft to get to work every single day. And if the prices go through the roof or there aren't rides available, they're the ones who are going to notice what's going on. And I think these strikes should be done in the top 10 cities in the United States, which would also be their top markets. Two of them are on the East Coast. Two of them are on the West Coast, and there's a bunch in the middle. Now, what this does is it causes this rolling outage, if you will, in the U.S. So on the East Coast, you'd have New York and Philadelphia. Personally, I would also throw in Atlanta and Miami at the same time. So you've got these four cities on the East Coast. You do this strike, say, from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. That's going to catch all those morning commuters that are normally going to either the office or looking to get on a plane in the morning to the airport. And then you move over to the central time zone where you're going to have Dallas and you're going to have, I'm just looking over here, Chicago, I think maybe, and Houston. I mean, these are really big cities where if they got plugged up in the central time zone during that six to 10 period. Now, look, now, if you think about it, right, it's a four hour strike. Uh, the reason I mentioned four hours is just because of the time zones. So now you've got an overlap between the East Coast and the central time zone. And so these times are now overlapping and Uber is really going to start paying attention at this point. You're going to move on over. You're going to go to Phoenix. We're looking at mountain time there. So that's going to start overlapping with the central time. And even towards the end of the strike on the East Coast. And then you're going to move to the West Coast where you're really going to hit um, Uber really hard because you're talking Los Angeles. You're talking San Diego. You're talking San Jose. I would throw in Seattle as well in there. You need to pick these populous areas because that's where it's going to have the biggest effect and it's where you're going to get the most eyeballs on things. So so what do you do while the strike is going on? Well, you're driving around, you're still out on the streets, but you're driving around with signs saying, hey, we're on strike for better pay and for driver safety. And you don't do this for a week. You don't do it for 10 days. You do it every single Monday morning. Every Monday morning you do this. 
and people are going to start noticing. If you just kind of do it all the time, then, you know, people aren't really going to pay too much attention to it because eventually people are going to flood in, flood the market and take advantage of the higher rates, right? Now, here's the other thing. I think you need at least 10% of the drivers in each of those cities in order to really make a dent. And I don't mean 10% of all the drivers. I'm talking about 10% of the drivers that are out there every single day, 10 to 12 hours a day, 40 to 60 hours a week. They're the ones that are bringing in the most money for Uber and Lyft, not the part-time drivers like me. They have to be full-time drivers. They have to be ones that are earning a lot, doing a lot, moving a lot of people for these companies. And then Uber and Lyft will take notice. Now, really, you don't... Uber and Lyft taking notice is not going to help us. Who really needs to take notice is the public. And if you're out every Monday, honking your horns, got your signs up, got your banners up, saying this is why we're protesting on Monday morning. This is why you can't get to work on time. This is why it's going to cost you $80 to drive to work instead of $30 like it used to. It's going to get noticed by people and it's going to get noticed by politicians. You want the politicians involved. Now look, I am not generally for striking. Um, and here's another thing that I think. I would not look down on anyone who did not want to participate in this because people need to make a living. For me to say I'm not going to drive between 6 and 10 means nothing because I typically don't drive between 6 and 10 a.m. on a Monday morning. I don't go to work in an office anymore, so I'm not given those rides that I used to give. And I'm just one part-time driver. The regular drivers that are out there that are earning regularly are the ones that need to do this. And like I said, I think it needs to be at least 10% of those full-time drivers. If you could get it up to 15 or 20%, that would definitely put a dent and be noticed. If people see cars driving around with their Uber signs and their Uber lights on, but they're not picking up passengers, they're gonna start asking questions. And this is when you get the opportunity to calmly explain to them, hey, this is what we're doing. I think 90% of the people in those cities, they're just going to continue driving and they're going to be like, oh, wow, look at this surge. I'm making a lot of money. In fact, if I didn't hear about it, I would probably do it too. The key is you got to have money to do something like this. You need community organizers. You need people who are willing to fund this in order to get the word out that it's going to happen. Ideally, because you want to, you know, you want to stay on the passenger's good side. Ideally, what you would do is take out an advertisement a week before this starts and say, look, every Monday morning, starting on this date, we are going to strike. You're going to need to find another way to work or you're going to be paying more money. Right? Get the community involved. A lot of details in there that I know that I'm missing. I'm not really one person to kind of do this kind of thing. I think drivers need a way to collectively bargain. So whether that's a union or whether that's some kind of driver committee or board, you know, um, that talks to these groups, uh, I, I think something needs to happen. Again, would I be a person striking? Probably not. I've got a day job. Um, I, I I get paid between eight and ten to to do my to do my day job. So being out on the road is not something that I'm doing at that time. But those of you that do this full time, something to consider. Now, I'm not telling you you have to strike. I'm not telling you. I'm not even saying that we should strike. Organizing something like this is going to take nine. 18 months to fully organize and get going. And by then, the landscape of rideshare is going to have changed. I mean, think about 18 months ago, how different it was doing rideshare than it is now. There's going to be a lot of change in that time. 
All right, I don't have much more to say. I just wanted to get my thoughts out there on this, about what I thought, about how it could be accomplished. Um, I hope Geo sees this. If you are in contact with him, send it his way. I would appreciate it. And um, yeah, that's it. Until next time, my name is John with Ride Upstate, reminding you that just because you're in a small market, like mine, doesn't mean you need to settle for small profits. Bye.